I'm Idris Elba, and this little journey of words is brought to you by me and Booking.com, but mostly by me. Now, imagine you're on vacation, you and your favorite peoples. Beachside bungalows, perfect weather, the smell of barbecue, barbecuing on the grill. Eh, you know the smell. Whatever your vibe is, it's probably just an easy click away, because with over 28 million places, chances are we've got the perfect place for your next trip. Come on, you know you need it. Find your perfect place to stay. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for baking your way here on this toasty morning. Are you all ready to jam? Excellent. Before we get rolling, let's start by hashing out everything bagel we'll be discussing. Profit margins are okay, but they could maybe be butter. Sorry, I don't mean to waffle. Next quarter, it's all or muffin. Did you have a question, sausage patty? Um, my name's Patricia. When you can't take your mind off breakfast, it matters where you stay. Delicious breakfast available at our Hilton family of brands. Hilton, for the stay. Hey, it's Christine from Storyworthy. Have you ever had a really bad day at work? I continued to deliver material that I had delivered many times before to appreciative, laughing crowds, and the audience continued to give me nothing. Have you ever been incredibly sick and had to work anyways? And all through this nothing I was getting... I was still nauseatingly seasick. I plowed through more than an hour's worth of material in about 40 minutes. I racked my brain and could think of nothing else to give these people. At this point, I wasn't even looking for laughs. I was just looking to fill time. On today's Storyworthy, comedian Kathy Ladman talks about her nightmare gig on a cruise ship. A couple of days later, I was in my cabin when my phone rang. Hello, I said. Hello, is this the fabulous Kathy Ladman? This is Graham Seymour, the cruise director. I was at your show the other night. We have you scheduled to do a show on Thursday, but I'm afraid you may have to leave the ship early. You received 20 negative comment cards, the most anyone's ever received. You're kidding, I said. Kathy Ladman talks about her nightmare gig on a cruise ship today on Storyworthy. Stay close. Hey, it's Kathy Ladman, and you're listening to Storyworthy. Welcome to Storyworthy. My name is Christine Blackburn, and I'm coming to you from Wondery Sunset Studio in West Hollywood, California. I'm so glad you guys tuned in today. Whether you're a longtime fan of the show or a new listener, welcome to Storyworthy. Now, today's story is brought to us from comedian Kathy Ladman, and the title is Nightmare Gig on a Cruise Ship. Now, that's the title of the podcast, but the title of her story is actually The Grand Princess Diaries, because she was on Grand Princess Cruise Line, and I guess she was writing, you know, kind of in a diary about what was going on. You're going to hear about it. It's absolutely hilarious, because if you know anything about Kathy Ladman, she's smart, and she's edgy, and she's most likely smarter than anybody in the room. And so her comedy is never going to be patronizing, and it's never going to... She's not going to be able to appeal to the lowest common denominator, and that's, you know, that's kind of the audience that was on that cruise ship. Now, I've been on a couple of cruises, actually two, and they were both both last year, and they were both on this high-end cruise line called Regent, Regent Cruise Ships. It's It's super fancy. I wasn't paying for it. I was with somebody who was performing on the ship, so I went as a guest. But it's one of these cruise lines where it's all inclusive, including like the day trips that you that you do during the day. Anything you want will be sent to your room. Any alcohol, anything, just ridiculous pampering, you know, free massages. I mean, just crazy. And I went from Mumbai, India to Dubai. So that was fascinating because I was in like one of the poorest cities in the world and then one of the wealthiest cities in the world. Stunning. And then I did another another trip through Greece from Istanbul and then through the Greek Isles and then back up to Istanbul. So so I've taken a couple of great trips recently. And um, the only downside is that, well, this particular cruise line, you know, everybody is a lot older. I mean, not I don't mean just like old like me, like 50. I mean, they're in their, you know, hundreds no. They're in their 80s and 90s because it's so expensive. Like, nobody else can afford it. So in that respect, it's kind of, you know, it's very conservative. It's very white. It's very Republican. That cruise line, Regent, it just is. It is what it is. It reminds me of kind of like the Ritz-Carlton atmosphere. 
that vibe if you go into a Ritz Carlton and it's so high end, I'm not personally comfortable. Like I'd rather like high end, like like a W Hotel high end. So it's kind of like funky and artsy. That's the kind of cruise line that we should we should create, Sergio. Me and you, we should do a hip, cool cruise line. Because let me tell you something, it ain't out there. Well, what do I know? I've only been on two. <laughs> And I'll tell you something, I'd go back in a minute because they were fabulous, absolutely fabulous. By the way, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Would you do that at StoryWorthy? It's very simple. Just follow me. It's no big deal. I shouldn't even have to ask you. Also, check out StoryWorthyPodcast.com before you shop on Amazon because you click on the link, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah? Okay. All right, let's get right to our story. Now, Kathy Labman, like I said, is a comedian. She's also a writer and an actress. You've seen her on television in shows like Mad Men, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Everybody Loves Raymond. And she has written and performed in two solo shows. The first was called Scaredy Pants, and she performed that at the Aspen Comedy Festival. And her second solo show is called Does This Show Make Me Look Fat? And that show is about her struggle with anorexia, which she also did a fabulous TED Talk on. So Kathy has a tremendous amount of, of work. She's just just an amazing talent. You can find a lot of her stuff at kathyladman.com, which is an amazing site. And also you can follow her on Twitter, at Kathy Ladman. All right, you guys, here she is right now, Kathy Ladman. Okay, this is, uh, this is called, uh, this took place approximately, I would guess, in the late 90s, this story. And it's called The Grand Princess Diaries. And the sort of subtitle of the story, in quotes, is Kathy Ladman is the worst comedian we have ever seen. (laughs) Conflict is essential for comedy. For comedy gigs, however, conflict sucks. From the outset, this cruise job had been a series of misadventures. When my agent had suggested that perhaps I could do cruises to make some money, I wasn't exactly thrilled. Cruise audiences can be some of the worst audiences out there, and everything's got to be squeaky clean and not at all remotely controversial to anyone in the room. However, I had done some cruises in the late 80s, maybe a dozen or so, and I had actually had a good time. I met great people, I went to fun locations, and I got paid. It had been a great experience. So when my agent said that he had a job for me working on a cruise ship, I leaped at the opportunity. Okay, maybe I didn't leap. Maybe I made an attempt to sit up straight. Anyway, I said yes, and I accepted this as a temporary fix to my financial irregularities. I will skip through all of the horrific travel details and complete disorganization of the cruise line, and I'll get right to my arrival at the ship. Keep in mind that at this point in the story, I have been awake for about 30 hours straight. Peter, the deputy cruise director, I don't know who deputized him, showed me to my cabin. He's telling me this and that, helping me to get oriented. My head is reeling with information that is exiting my brain as quickly as it enters. Peter seems nice, actually the nicest person I've met in the past 30 hours. Then he says, and your first show tonight is at 845. I figure this is ship humor. Right. You're kidding, I say. He wasn't. It turns out that I have not one, but two shows. It was right there in the program. Kathy Ladman, spelled with a K. Always a good feeling for me at 845 and 1045. Who else is on the show, I asked. Just you. How long do I do? 45 minutes, says Peter, wincing slightly. 45 minutes on a ship is at least an hour and 15 minutes worth of land material. (laughs) I'll have to dig up everything, lots of old stuff. I hope I can even remember it. I know I can't do my favorite material like my Hitler stuff. That might kill them. I'm not kidding. (laughs) Well, I'd better try to get some sleep, I told him. It was now 3 o'clock p.m. I lay down, closed my eyes, and stared at the inside of my skull for two hours. I could not sleep. I was too wound up about these shows. I was not at all in shape to get on stage. And frankly, in my current physical and mental state, I was beyond nervous. Oh, fuck it. I'll just do my act, which I know is funny, and I'm funny, so what's the problem? 
I prettified myself as best as I could as the ship set sail or however you describe the departure of a ship that doesn't have a sail, per se. <laughs> I never had any significant problem with motion sickness, maybe once in a very minor way on rough seas, but that was it. Well, guess what? <laughs> Something in my physiology must have changed because first I started to get dizzy and then I started to get really sick. I waited thinking it would pass. It got worse. I called Peter and asked him if I could get some boning or something like that and he said he'd get on it. He called me back and said that the consensus, between whom I have no idea, was to not give me boning or Dramamine since they would make me too tired to do my shows. Oh, I see. Apparently they preferred me sick to tired. Instead, he was bringing me some ginger capsules, a natural remedy for motion sickness, and these elastic bracelets that are supposed to counteract the effects of the rocking. Fine, fine, whatever, give it to me. I just want this to go away. I took the capsules, I put on the bracelets, and I waited. Nothing. My show was soon. I was getting worse, and now I'm wearing these bracelets, and I look either like Wonder Woman or like I had unsuccessfully attempted suicide. I didn't know what to do. Frankly, there was nothing I could do. Eating something was definitely out of the question, so I made my way to the showroom. I had had a look at the audience when I entered the room. Lots of white hair. The seats were of a lounge room variety, soft and comfy, very bad for comedy. Remember, conflict, comedy, good. I went backstage and waited for the show to start. There was a small band, maybe four pieces, playing some innocuous lounge music. You know, the kind of music that doesn't offend, although I found it incredibly offensive. The band leader said to the audience in a game show announcer voice, We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Some taped music came on, and while backstage, the band leader proceeded to scream at the band, telling them that they sounded like shit, and they better fucking get it together. Oh, I wish the audience could have heard that. The band came back, and they played the often requested and always grating theme from The Love Boat. Peter said to me, are you ready? Yes, I said, meaning no. The band went into some unnameable upbeat tune, while Peter jumped up and down in the wings, apparently getting himself all worked up. The band leader introduced Peter, and he sprinted out there like Bob Barker used to in the 60s. He proceeded to tell an old joke, which the audience seemed to love, and then he introduced me. I did an opening bit. Nothing. I did another bit. Nothing. I continued to deliver material that I had delivered many times before to appreciative, laughing crowds, and the audience continued to give me nothing. They were consistent. I gave them that. And all through this nothing I was getting, I was still nauseatingly seasick. I plowed through more than an hour's worth of material in about 40 minutes. I racked my brain and could think of nothing else to give these people. At this point, I wasn't even looking for laughs. I was just looking to fill time. Finally, I thought, forget it. I'm leaving. 40 minutes is close enough. In closing, I said to the audience, by the way, if any of you see me out at the pool tomorrow, please be completely silent so I know it's you. Good night. (laughs) I walked off to tepid clapping. I can't even call it applause. Peter came back on stage and said, Kathy Ladman, as if these people wanted to hear my name again. And then he insistently called me out for another bow. I went out and took a bow, if only to fully experience the surrealism of it all. Then I went backstage and dropped onto, into a chair, sick as ever. Second show, I was feeling worse and worser. I felt like I was going to throw up, and hearing the theme from the love boat served only as a catalyst. Peter bounded out on stage again and did the same old joke, which got a laugh, just like it did the first time. I was sitting on the edge of a riser backstage, literally with my head in my hands. When he introduced me, I got up and slowly walked out to center stage. I began to just talk to the audience, and this time they were responding. It was going pretty well. It wasn't the greatest show I'd ever done by land standards, but it was good enough. I managed to do 45 minutes, have a decent time, while the audience seemed to enjoy it. A couple of days later, 
We were in port at Fort Lauderdale. The ship wasn't moving, and I felt better. It was about 4 p.m. I was in my cabin when my phone rang. Hello, I said. Hello, is this the fabulous Kathy Lackman? A British accent asked. Why, yes, it is, I replied. This is Graham Seymour, the cruise director. This was my first contact with him since I'd arrived three days prior. Oh, hello, I said. And here's how it went. I was at your show the other night. We have you scheduled to do a show on Thursday, but I'm afraid you may have to leave the ship early. You're kidding, I said. I really thought it was more ship humor. No, I'm afraid not. You received 20 negative common cards, the most anyone's ever received. I considered that for a moment. That makes me very special. Not in a good way, he said. I explained to the humorless dimwit that I was trying to be positive about it. Yes, well. He said that many people had objected to my material about Jesus and religion. Gee, maybe I should have done the Hitler material. (laughs) So uh, what, am I supposed to start packing? Oh, no, no. As if I had insanely pulled that idea out of thin air. We wouldn't have you leave now. We have to see if we can get a replacement first. It's possible we may have to have you do a show on Thursday, as if that would be their last horrifying resort. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know. I'd never been fired in my entire career as a comedian. True, this whole thing had been a nightmare from the start. But still, I was being fired. The ship left port at 6 p.m. with a new load of passengers, and I mean load. I went to the opening show, and this asshole... This will be his name from here on in, was in the show. He seemed to fancy himself a comedian, doing a variety of ship jokes and otherwise tired concepts. He did the kind of comedy I can't stand, and I wasn't surprised. I decided to find him between shows. I went down to the entertainment office and told him that I wanted to talk to him. He invited me into his private office, closed the door, and went to sit behind his big, I'm important and you're not desk. You know, Graham, I said, a lot more than 20 people enjoyed my show the other night. Yes, well, they didn't write comment cards. Well, I said, maybe those aren't the kind of people who vote on that sort of thing. I said, hoping he'd sense how ridiculous I thought the whole idea was. He said many of the other performers had received positive comment cards. I said that only about five minutes of my act was about Jesus and religion. He said, well, these common cards were ruthless. And he told me, one of them said that Kathy Ladman is the worst comedian we've ever seen. I thought, worse than Gallagher? Maybe that's what these people like. Maybe that's the whole problem with this conservative religious right bunch that I was attempting to entertain with my brand of humor which they couldn't possibly appreciate because most of them wouldn't even be able to get past the fact that I was a Jewish woman from New York. And furthermore, the asshole continued, he and a couple of other officers in charge had decided that there was no way they were going to have me perform again that week. Apparently, they had had a conference about this, like that conference they had had about the advisability of giving me some boning. Oh, no, no, none of us would feel comfortable having you perform again like I pose some sort of danger to the ship. Maybe I'm just too edgy for this crowd, I told him, way too politely. Oh, no, no. It's not a matter of being edgy. I love to be edgy. I always push the envelope with these audiences. I believe he was confusing pushing the envelope with relentlessly hacky. I got up to leave his office, and I turned around at the door. Well, Lenny Bruce was arrested. And I turned around and left. What a self-righteous prick. I just knew that he was fated to a life on a cruise ships, performing over-processed, unmemorable drivel to audiences that had chosen between coming on a cruise and going to a theme park. I was informed that I would be leaving two days later from Grand Cayman. When I finally arrived home, my dog Preston gave me the best greeting. I know, I know, boy. Mommy was away spending time with jerks. A few weeks later, I was looking through the travel section of the L.A. Times, and I saw an ad for Princess Cruises. 
All I could think of was that asshole dressed like an organ grinder's monkey, hopping around on the stage, the audience cheering wildly. It was so good to be back on dry land. Come on, you guys. How great is Kathy Ladman? I mean, she is so bright and so interesting and always has something to say. Definitely not a fit for the, for the, for the Princess Cruise Line. She's too smart, man. She's too insightful. I don't know. I'm not sure what cruise line should fit in on. Like I said, it's, it's, we got to come up with some sort of cruise line like a, like a W cruise line. That would be great. Let's do that. Who's with me? Come on. Let's, 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 let's get together. Let's make a Facebook page. <laughs> All right, you guys. Let's wrap it up right now. I want to thank our storyteller, Kathy Ladman. Again, you can find her over on Twitter, at Kathy Ladman. And why not tweet her and tell her how much you enjoyed her story on StoryWorthy. And then you can follow me there, too, at StoryWorthy. And why not check out StoryWorthyPodcast.com and check out past episodes with my dear friend, Hannes Finney. Why don't you do that? And join us next week on StoryWorthy for a very personal story by comedian Craig Shoemaker about narcissistic personality disorder. Basically, what they're saying, my mom would do that too, is that they're basically saying, no, I do not accept you for the way you are. I want you to be the way I want you to be. Don't miss Craig Shoemaker next week on StoryWorthy. All right, I want to thank everybody over here at Wondery today, including our sound engineer, Sergio Enriquez. And on behalf of our storyteller, one more time, Kathy Ladman. My name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story-worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. I'm Major Selber, and this little journey of words is brought to you by me and Booking.com, but mostly by me. Now, imagine you're on vacation, you and your favorite peoples. Beachside bungalows, perfect weather, the smell of barbecue, barbecuing on the grill. Eh, you know the smell. Whatever your vibe is, it's probably just an easy click away, because with over 28 million places, chances are we've got the perfect place for your next trip. Come on, you know you need it. Find your perfect place to stay. Booking.com. Booking dot. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for baking your way here on this toasty morning. Are you all ready to jam? Excellent. Before we get rolling, let's start by hashing out everything bagel we'll be discussing. Profit margins are okay, but they could maybe be butter. Sorry, I don't mean to waffle. Next quarter, it's all or muffin. Did you have a question, sausage patty? Um, my name's Patricia. When you can't take your mind off breakfast, it matters where you stay. Delicious breakfast available at our Hilton family of brands. Hilton, for the stay. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. We've locked in low prices to help you save big store-wide. Look for the locked in low prices tags and enjoy extra savings throughout the store. Baker's, fresh for everyone.